My name's Peter, and this is the most haunting memory of my life. This incident happened when I was 12 years old. My father had transferable jobs, so we often switched houses. One time, we were staying in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The company gave us an old house to stay in. It was morning, I was helping my mom unpack our things. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. My father was at work, it was just the two of us in the house. I rushed to the door and opened it. I saw an old woman standing on our house porch. She smiled back at me and said, Is your mother home? I called my mom. And they started to chat. I came to know that this old woman was our next door neighbor. Apparently, she was also a valuable member of the town council. She invited our family for the annual township parade and fireworks on the coming Saturday. My mom happily accepted the invitation, and the old woman left. That night, when my dad came home, my mom told him all about it. Even though my parents were excited to go there, I, on the other hand, knew I would be bored. Being a kid is not easy, and I hated every time we moved to a new area. Anyways, we all got dressed up and left for the township annual parade. The celebration took place in a huge local park. Town people greeted us, and the old woman got busy introducing my parents to all the council members. I grabbed an ice cream from a truck nearby and sat down on a wooden bench. A group of seven to eight people were marching in the entire park, wearing different kinds of funky costumes. Everyone was having a good time. The fireworks started, and I got busy watching them. I don't know how long I sat like that, but suddenly, a sound broke my concentration. I heard a faint sobbing sound nearby. My eyes wandered around the park for three to four seconds, and that's when I saw it. Under a tree to my left, I saw a really tall figure standing in the dark. It was a man, but I couldn't see his face clearly. The only thing that caught my attention was his weird looking shoes. I was trying to figure out the entire situation when the tall man came out from the dark. It was a man dressed in a clown costume. His attire explained why he was wearing those funky shoes. As I was looking at him, this sense of discomfort came over me. Unlike other normal clowns, he looked completely different. Tears were rolling down his eyes, messing up his creepily painted face. His face was extremely sad. He was just standing there and watching me. I don't know what it was about his stare, but I couldn't move an inch. It felt like someone had glued me to the bench. I don't know how long I sat there, but it felt like forever. The man wasn't blinking, he wasn't even moving. He just stood there with a terrifyingly sad face and watched me. Suddenly, a huge firework burst above my head and I got my senses back. I looked up for a second and again looked at the tree, but he was gone. That night after coming home, I didn't sleep well. I even had a terrible dream. In my dream, I saw myself standing alone in that park. The park was empty and awfully quiet. There wasn't any sound around me, but all of a sudden I heard a sobbing sound. I turned over and saw the sad clown standing near the park blocking my way. He was whispering uncomfortably. After whimpering like that for a while, the clown finally said, I want to smile. Can you put a smile on my face? He then took out a shiny knife from his pocket and started to cut his mouth to a great smile. I could hear the sound of flesh tearing. The more he cut himself, the louder his whimpering grew. I turned back to run and fell on the ground. That's when I woke up in my bed covered in sweat. I didn't tell my parents about this because I already knew they wouldn't believe me. A few days went by and I almost forgot about this clown. I went to my local school. I met a girl named Sarah who lived close to my house. She was kind to me the very first day and we became good friends in no time. Sarah and I often walked home together after school. One day, we were walking down the road when she started talking about the history of the town. She talked about the annual parade thing and that's when that scary clown flashed in my memory. I said in a hesitant voice, Um, yeah, I was there that night, but the clown of the parade seemed really weird to me. Sarah looked at me with surprised eyes and said, What clown? I replied, Well, there was this clown that irritated me by making a sad face and then suddenly disappeared. Sarah didn't let me finish. She said, Are you sure it was a clown? I nodded my head. Yeah, everyone knows what a clown looks like. Sarah said in a low but serious voice, We're in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We don't have clowns anymore. It's kind of forbidden here. Everyone believes clowns to be a bad omen after 2016. I said in a confused voice, What happened in 2016? 
Sarah told me how criminals terrified this area dressed in clown costumes, and how people were scared to go out. Everyone's life turned miserable due to these killer clowns, until cops caught them, and even shot some of them, all to put a stop to it. Sarah also said that the town people believe that the spirits of those dead clowns still haunt the area. The sun was about to set, and the sky turned dark. We realized it was getting late, and there was no one in the streets. Sarah waved me goodbye, and then went towards her house on the right. Though, my house was still a 10 minute walk away. I started to walk faster, as her story spooked me a bit. The memory of that terrifying dream again grabbed my mind. I had no shame in saying that I was insanely scared in that moment. I decided to take the shortcut through the park. The park was completely empty, and I began walking through it. After taking a few steps, a sense of fear grabbed my heart. I felt as if someone was watching me. And looking back over my shoulder, I saw the most spine-chilling sight. That sad clown from my dream was standing at the entrance of the park. Even though there was darkness around, I could still see his terrifying face. I tried to tell myself it was all just in my imagination and I turned and started to walk even faster. But suddenly, a rapid sound of footsteps started to appear behind me. As I looked behind me in reaction, I saw the clown running towards me at full speed. His arms were widely stretched, his face was dripping with tears of blood, and the way he was staring at me freaked me out. For a moment, I thought if he caught me, he would kill me without any hesitation. I screamed at the top of my lungs and started to run towards my house. I didn't look back, I didn't stop, I just kept running for my life. I don't remember exactly what happened in the end, but my mom told me she heard a loud bang on the door and my scream. As she opened the door, she found me unconscious on her porch. A high fever took over, and I got bedridden for a week. My mom told me I often mummed in my sleep, about if someone caught me that I'd get killed. My mom still doesn't know what exactly happened to her son that day. My dad changed his job, and we took a house near our grandparents. I never went back to that town. And since then, I stay the hell away from clowns. Sometimes, I even get nightmares of seeing myself running on an empty road, even though no one's chasing me. And all of a sudden, that sad clown would appear in front of me. <laughs> this incident has made my life miserable. For the last 10 years, I haven't seen any one of my family. I was five years old and about to turn six. I never met my father. My mom told me he left her at a very young age. I was raised by mostly just my mother and my grandma. Many people cherish childhood memories, but I curse mine. We weren't rich, but I came from a financially stable household. I was a shy kid, which made me an easy target to bullies. My only friend, Amanda, always watched my back. It was before my 10th birthday, and my mom came to pick me up from school. As we got in the car, she asked me, So, you're turning 10 tomorrow. How about a themed birthday party? I smiled and said, What theme, mom? She replied, Well, we're going to put up decorations in the backyard and order your favorite strawberry cake. You can invite your friends. It'll be fine, Jeremy. I got excited about hearing the plans my mom made. After coming home, my mom and grandma started with the birthday arrangements. I called Amanda and invited her. My mom phoned her neighbors and invited them to the party tomorrow. With a big smile on my face, I went to bed that night. The next morning, my mom woke me up. I got so many presents. By afternoon, our backyard was flooding with cheerful kids and their parents. There were balloons everywhere. Amanda and I were playing when a kid from our neighborhood said in a loud voice, Look, there's a clown here. I looked over. And sure enough, I saw a man dressed in a clown costume standing in the distance. His red-colored hair and funky clothes made him look funny. He had a big red smile on his white painted face. His eyes were big and shiny. He said in a squeaky voice, So where's the birthday boy? Amanda said, Jeremy's here. The clown suddenly looked at me and our eyes met. He smiled even bigger than before and walked towards me in a very weird way. He leaned in towards my face, and I got a bit creeped out. He said in the same voice, So Jeremy, you're a big boy now. I have a special gift for you. And then laughed. I wasn't happy to see this guy at my birthday, but I guess clowns are common at birthday parties, so I didn't think too much about it. If I'm being honest, I had no fear of clowns whatsoever, 
but this guy gave me some really weird vibes. And I said in a hesitated tone, Um, what gift? He put his hand inside his pocket, and then took out a wooden box. As I opened the box, I saw a set of colored pencils. It was a generous gift, and I thanked the clown. The clown laughed again and said, I guess we're friends now, Jeremy. I stood there silently with an uncomfortable face. I didn't know what to say. That's when my mom came in and patted my back, saying it was time to cut the cake. The clown looked at my mom, and his face changed. It was clear he didn't like the interruption. Anyways, everyone gathered around the cake placed on the wooden table. Ten candles were lit on the cake. As I lifted the knife to cut it, the clown said, Make a wish first, Jeremy. I'm sure it'll come true. I blew the candles and honestly didn't wish for anything. The birthday party was going well. The clown was interacting with other kids, but whenever I looked at him, he looked back at me and smiled. I was sitting on the swing and having my cake when Marco came to me. Now, Marco was a bully at my school. We studied in the same class and unfortunately lived in the same neighborhood too. He was often really mean to me. I didn't want any trouble that day, so I sat quietly. Marco started to tease me, saying how boring the party was. I didn't react, but suddenly he said, Maybe if you had a dad, your party would have been more fun, and started to laugh at me. I felt very insulted by this remark, so I said in an angry voice, Well, you can leave then. No one wants you here, Marco. Marco's face turned all red, and he pushed me off the swing. It was a low swing, so I didn't get hurt, but my cake fell on the ground. My parents came to stop the fight, and his mother apologized for his behavior. My mom shrugged it off, saying things like this often happen in kids. I got really angry and went to my room. My mom kept calling me to come back, but I sat near my bedroom window trying to cool off the anger. I could see the entire backyard from my room window, and that's when I noticed something. Marco was playing with a bunch of kids from our school. The clown was standing close to him. As he ran toward a kid to catch him, I saw the clown push him subtly. Marco fell to the ground, tumbling over a small rock and broke his chin. A tooth fell to the ground and he started crying in pain. I saw it all clearly from my bedroom window. It all happened so fast that everyone thought it was just an accident. I could clearly see the clown intentionally pushing him. His parents left the party to take him to the hospital. The clown looked up at my bedroom window and smiled. It felt as if he did that to punish Marco on my behalf. At that moment I was angry, and just a kid, so I felt Marco deserved it. I went downstairs and saw the kids leaving. My mom was busy talking to the parents of the other kids about the accident. I was standing on our house porch alone. Suddenly, I turned to my left and my heart skipped a beat. The clown came near me and stood beside me silently. I got scared of seeing him, but he leaned in towards my face and said, I'm your friend, Jeremy. This will be our little secret. I realized he now knows that I saw him pushing Marco. And that's when my mom called me to take my gifts inside. I walked towards my mom, but as I looked back, I saw the clown was nowhere. My mom was just as confused. She said, where did the clown guy go? I couldn't even pay him. Two to three days later, I went to the park with Amanda. We were playing near the jungle gym when I heard a voice close to my back. Hello, Jeremy. You remember me? I saw the same clown standing behind me with this creepy smile. Amanda said, Hey, you came to Jeremy's birthday party. The clown smiled back and said, Yeah, and now I came to see you guys again. He gave us candies and said, How's your friend Marco? I looked at Amanda and said in a fumbling voice, He's, uh, he's fine now. The clown seemed interested in spending time with us, but suddenly my mom rushed towards us. Why don't you leave these kids alone, huh? I know what you did to poor Marco. Jeremy told me you pushed him. Listen, you freak. If you don't leave now, I'm going to call the cops on you. The clown took a few steps back. I saw his joyful smile change into a mean, evil grin. He then looked at me and said, Don't be afraid, Jeremy. I'll always be your friend. He then walked away silently. I knew my mom was pissed at him. And in the back of my mind, something told me he wasn't going to sleep on the insult. The day was the 10th of March. Yeah, I'll never forget this date. When I came home from school, a man and I often walked home together. When we arrived at my house, I waved to her goodbye and walked towards my house porch. I twisted the doorknob and got inside. Usually, my mom watched TV whenever she was home taking a day off. But that day, the entire ambience of the house was awfully quiet. I said, Mom, I'm home. 
but no reply came. I said again, Mom? Where are you? I'm hungry. Still no reply. A shiver ran down my spine. A feeling surrounded me, telling something was not right with our house. I slowly walked towards the kitchen, and what I saw made my skin crawl in fear. The clown was sitting on the kitchen floor in front of a small pool of blood. He smiled at me and said, Welcome home, Jeremy. Do you want to see something funny? He then dipped his hand in the blood. While his finger dripped the blood on the floor, the guy started to literally lick them. I screamed at the top of my lungs, and the clown started to laugh. His hysterical laughter echoed in the empty house. I said, now crying at this point, Where is my mom? What did you do to her? The clown got up and said in an angry, vengeful voice, Your mom? She's not your mom. She kept you away from me all these years. I'm your dad. Jeremy, you're my son. The clown then went behind the kitchen table and started to drag something. I was out of words, completely shocked by what was happening with my life. But the ultimate horror flashed in front of my eyes as the clown dragged my mom's body. He slit her throat and she was lying on the ground lifeless, covered with blood. The clown then looked at me and laughed. I screamed even louder this time as I couldn't believe my eyes. People in our neighborhood gathered in front of my house. The clown didn't even try to run away. He just stood there watching my dead mom with his psychotic face. The cops came and arrested him. I came to know he was indeed my actual dad, but he was in prison for some serious criminal charges, which is why my mom kept me away from him all these years. He got bailed before my birthday and came to get his son back. I was standing close to my grandma. We were in tears when the paramedics took my mom's body away. The neighborhood was watching with scared eyes when the cops took the clown away. Before getting into the car, he looked back at me and said, Remember, Jeremy, I'll always be your friend. I feel I'm absolutely lost now. I don't make new friends, and I don't even see my close ones. I don't know whether the clown slash my dad received capital punishment for murdering my mother, but I'm already enough messed up in trouble to ask anyone about it. My grandma sent me away to boarding school to keep me away from all this, and since then I've been running away from my past. My grandma had an obsession with dolls. The obsession went to such a level that she basically turned the house into a doll museum. She collected dolls from anywhere, and I mean literally anywhere. One time, I went to the grocery store with my grandma. We were coming home, and on our way my grandma saw a broken doll laying on the roadside. She picked it up and brought it home. So yeah, I grew up amidst a lot of dolls, and not all of them were nice. My grandpa was popular as a ventriloquist at a young age. I think that's how grandma's liking towards dolls came in the picture. My father worked in the Navy, and my mom passed away when I was five years old. My grandparents took care of me. I only saw my dad once or twice a year during the holidays. Not having a mother did upset me at first, but my grandma showered me with all her love. I got used to living around the dolls. Until one day, my grandpa received a package from his old friend. As he unwrapped the foil, we discovered a mid-sized clown doll lying inside a wooden box. Now, I've seen a lot of dolls, but this one in particular creeped me out. Maybe because of how big it was. It was almost the size of a toddler. The more closely I looked at its face, the more chilling vibes it gave me. My grandpa said that he had a friend named Marco, who was a ventriloquist with him, and this was his dummy. Having a clown doll as a ventriloquist dummy seemed really odd. There was a letter inside the package. My grandpa opened the letter and read it out loud. Dear Samuel, If you're reading this letter, then I am no longer in this world. You've been a good friend to me, even though we hardly met each other for the last couple of years. I'm leaving Willie at your responsibility. You know he can get cranky if he's not treated right. All you need to do is treat him as your own family member. Include him in your meals and always make him sleep inside his box. Don't put him elsewhere. He doesn't like changes. I only trust you with him. Your dear friend, Marco. My grandma said in a surprised voice, That's a lot of caution for a simple doll. Grandpa laughed and said, Well, you haven't seen Marco with Willie. In those days, he treated Willie like his own son. He even told me once that Willie cried all night because Marco forgot to kiss him goodnight. To me, 
All these stories didn't feel adorable, but rather I was spooked to see this new addition into our doll collection. But with more passing days, I started to realize there was something really wrong with the clown doll. My grandparents surprisingly started to treat Willie like an actual family member. Maybe they felt bad for Marco. I was already annoyed with the presence of this doll, so I stayed away from it as far as possible. One night, we sat for dinner. I was about to start eating when my grandma said, Cassie, please bring Willie for dinner. I was reluctant, but to avoid further discussion about the stupid doll, I got up and brought Willie. There was something about the eyes and the smile of the clown that made me feel like there was an actual person living under it. I mean, its expression felt so lively and equally creepy. After finishing dinner, I was about to go to bed. My grandpa took Willie and put him in his box. My room was right next to the doll room. I was sleeping when a sudden sound of footsteps woke me up. At first, I thought I imagined it, but within a few seconds, I felt someone was standing right outside my door and watching me. I immediately got up in fear and switched on the light. I clearly remember shutting my door before going to bed, when I found the door wide open. Next morning, at breakfast, I asked my grandpa if he had come to my room last night, but he said he didn't, and neither did grandma. This wasn't the only incident that started to grow a sense of fear in me. A few days later, I was watching TV in the living room alone. The doll was perfectly visible from where I was. Unfortunately, my grandpa kept the clown door right in front of my room entrance. My eyes were often going to the doll in the room. I was feeling very irritated because it seemed like the clown was watching me with its wide eyes. At some point, my level of patience gave in and I got up. I grabbed a white sheet from the rack and covered the doll with it. I came back to my spot and started to watch the TV peacefully. 15 to 20 minutes passed by without incident, but suddenly I heard a coughing sound. I thought it was my grandma, so for the first few seconds I didn't react. But with time, the coughing sound intensified, as if someone was unable to breathe. My grandpa rushed downstairs thinking something had happened to me. After discovering me all fine, he got shocked too. We were trying to figure out where the sound was coming from, and my eyes went to the doll room. I don't know if you'll believe me or not, but the white cloth that I used to cover up Willie was drenched in blood stains. Stains as if someone coughed blood into it. My grandpa and I rushed over and lifted up the cover. There were drops of blood on Willie's lips. Just to say, we were completely terrified of what just happened. My grandpa said, Did you cover him, Cassie? I replied, I mean, yeah, I was watching TV and his eyes were creeping me out. I mean, it's just a doll, right? My grandpa said in a confused voice, this is really weird. How come there's blood on his lips? No one could come to a rational explanation about the incident, but since that day, I became sure that this doll is no doubt haunted. I couldn't say that to my grandparents though, as they were in confusion about what to believe. But what happened that night was enough to traumatize me for life. After dinner, I came to my room and lied down. I couldn't shake off the thought that the coughing sound was made by none other than Willie. It made me terrified to think that I actually made it difficult for him to breathe, which is why he started to cough blood to drive our attention. But can a simple doll do all this? This question was driving me crazy. I don't really remember when I dozed off, but a bizarre sensation woke me up. I felt someone was breathing on my face. As I opened my sleepy eyes, it took me a few seconds to adjust to the sight. But as soon as it did, my heart dropped to my throat. The clown, Willie, was standing right next to my bed and breathing on my face. His eyes were so close to mine that I couldn't tell if it was real or just a dream. And that's when I saw his eyes turning blood red. His face was filled with anger, as if he wanted me dead. I tried to scream, but he placed his cold, bony finger on my lips and said in a squeaky, spine-chilling voice, Be quiet, Cassie. Then took a few steps back and smiled, showing his big yellow teeth. Before I could guess what was about to happen, Willie floated in the air and then jumped on me. I couldn't take it anymore and screamed at the top of my lungs and hit the doll with my bed lamp. The doll fell on the floor, making a loud thud. My grandparents came running and found me sobbing, sitting on my bed while Willie was lying on the floor. I knew it wasn't a dream, and I knew I couldn't stay with this doll anymore. My grandpa switched on the lights. I told them what exactly happened. He then walked towards the doll and picked it up. But who knew, the actual horror was yet to be unfolded. 
As he took a close look over Willie's face, he said, What is this? Looks like there's something underneath this doll. He then sat down on the chair nearby. My grandma and I stood quietly with scared eyes. Due to the strike of the lamp, Willie's forehead got cracked in the left side corner. My grandpa started to take out the fiber coating. And after some time, we discovered a terrible truth. There was a small, weary skeleton lying under the doll. And there were remains of a dead human being inside the doll. My grandpa went to the cops with the doll. And the cops found out that Marco had a son. But his son passed away with black fever. But to keep his son with him forever, Marco stuffed his son's skeleton inside the clown doll. And the cops burnt the doll. And since then, my grandparents stopped bringing any dolls into our house. 